action. All right, the mirror dive effect can either be done the easy way or the hard way. The easy way would be to film yourself go through the water sideways, just like they do in similar effects like this, and in this tutorial. The post-production process is fairly simple. Shit, wait, no, don't watch their tutorial. Watch my tutorials. First, you want to oh, this tutorial is amazing. Okay, also watch theirs. Sideways is easier because your body flipped on the mirror axis is pretty much symmetrical. Unless you have like one giant arm or something. In this case, you would only have to film yourself go in once for the effect and a seamless loop. Or you can do what I always do and find the hardest way to do something. In my version, I dive in face first, in both a front shot and a side shot. And if you're gonna try this, you're gonna also need to film yourself go in backwards or feet first. If you wanna make life even harder, yeah, you can try to make this video also a seamless loop. In which case, you're gonna need to start both dives in almost the exact same position. Meaning in your back dive, you need to start frontwards and rotate as you go in. Also, with both methods, you need to try and hide underwater as long as you can after your dive. Just remember, it's really hard to breathe underwater. And if you drown, it's gonna be much harder to finish the video. You wanna film at a low angle and a high shutter speed, or if you're on a phone, on a bright day, to make sure you don't get too much motion blur. Also, make sure you have plenty of room around the diver so that you can rotate later without getting black edges. Also, since this involves a digital crop, filming in 4K will help preserve sharpness. Now for the editing, I'm gonna be showing you how I did it with Adobe Premiere, but you could probably use a few other professional editing programs for this. First, I'm gonna show you how you would do it the easy way with the side flip. Step number one is to trim the clip to that moment where you're halfway through the water. Next, we're gonna duplicate the clip, then take the second version and reverse the speed. Now we've got the forward and reverse versions synced to meet up at the splash. Next we put the forward version on a higher track so we can extend both to be the same length. Now that we're gonna to need to see both clips at once, we're gonna change the sequence settings to be twice as tall, even though we might not use all of that vertical height. Here I'm using the action safe guides and rulers to find a middle point in the screen. These buttons can be found in Adobe Premiere under the add button button editor. Now I'm using the effect controls panel to move the top clip up on the screen, lining the splash up with my middle guide. Next, I'm using the effects panel and looking for the crop effect. I'm trimming up the bottom and then I'm going to add a feather. Now, this could also be done using masks and feathers, which helps if your footage isn't perfectly level. Now that we can see the time reverse version underneath, we're gonna to need to give it a vertical flip effect. Then we're gonna pull it down so it lines up with the same splash middle point. At this point, you should have a pretty awesome mirror dive single loop. Now we're gonna to need to add some rotations and duplicate this whole thing, so we're gonna nest the two clips into one and that will show up as one clip in the timeline. Now's our chance to turn our main sequence settings back down to a resolution that will work better for our export. For example, for Instagram, I do 1080 by 1080 square. Now we add the digital camera animation that follows the diver. For this, we're gonna add position and rotation keyframes at the beginning. Then later when the diver's on the other side of the world, we change the position and rotation and we get the new keyframes automatically. Halfway between these two keyframes when the water plane should be vertical, I make an adjustment to the position which gives me another position keyframe. Lastly, I take some more time to fuss around with the timing of these keyframes, adding things like ease out and ease in to my keyframes and smooth everything out. Now that we basically have one finished half of the loop, we just have to duplicate everything again and reverse this new second version. This not only reverses the video but also the keyframe camera animation and we get a seamless loop. Oh, the loop is so seamless. Ah! I fussed around with a little more color correction using the Lumetri color panel in Premiere. Export and... Sick, you're done. Just put it on the World Wide Web. Don't forget HTTP colon slash slash at the beginning. Also tag me. How'd you do that? Can we try it? Uh... So you want to copy me, huh? It's not going to be so easy. So you want to try the face first version. The first difference is that we don't reverse the face forward dive. We take the version where you went in backwards and reverse that. Now, assuming we want a seamless loop. Oops. Technically, the easiest way to get a loop out of this would be to take these two clips and do everything we did in the easy version, flipping, aligning, nesting, and then duplicating and reversing to get basically that ping pong or boomerang forwards and backwards loop. But in this case, if you reverse it, the diver will go in back first or feet first at some point. 
And I just didn't think that was cool. I wanted to see myself go in forwards every single time. Which means, at some point, I need to transition from the back dive to the forward dive before going back in the water. And this is where starting both the forward and backward dives in the exact same position is so important. First, we're gonna put the reverse back dive before the front dive because we want it to go from the reverse back to the front. Despite my best efforts to start both takes in the same exact spot, there's still a jump. Now there are two methods for smoothing this transition out. First, we wanna find a good sync point where the two clips line up. So I raise the second clip, lower its opacity, and slide it over, looking for that point where the two match up. I then trim it, raise the opacity back up, and drop the clip back down. One approach to do the actual smoothing here is to use the built-in morph transition in Adobe Premiere, and there's probably similar effects in other programs. When it's done analyzing, the scene will actually create in-between frames and morph from cut to cut. Another cheaper trick that actually sometimes works better is to hide the transition in movement. For this, I took the reverse back dive, and once I'm up on the landing, I took the last chunk of time, copied it, and then unreversed it creating a mini ping pong or boomerang effect that goes from up onto the landing into forwards towards the pool. But of course in this take, I would rotate and I don't want that. So I cut mid movement from the dive that would rotate to the dive that goes straight in. And hiding this cut mid movement makes it less noticeable. Now in either the cut or morph transition, you're still gonna have some sudden changes to the background that throw things off. And a quick solution to this is to make a copy of the second clip, put it on a higher level and extend the beginning over the previous clip. To this version, we cut out the diver using a mask on the opacity property and then invert it so the person is cut out. Then to this version that contains everything except the diver, we do a longer slow fade over the last second or two. Slowly fading in this new clip that covers just the background makes it less noticeable and eases us into the new background. Now that we have a smooth transition from a front dive to a back dive, we're going to extend these clips so there's plenty of time of just water at the beginning and end. Next we're going to select all these clips and nest them into a sequence we'll call face first one loop. Then you're going to click this clip and press the letter F. This is the match frame command and brings the clip into the source monitor where we can add a marker at the point where you're coming out of the water, a marker where you're up on landing, and then another marker right when you hit the water again. These markers will show up in the clip in your timeline and be really helpful for syncing later. The next few steps are going to be very similar to what we did in the beginner version. Change your sequence settings to be double height. Then we're going to duplicate it, lift it, crop it, flip it, drop it. Stop it. Stop it. Get some help. Clearly we're not out of the woods yet. This isn't right. But thanks to our markers, we can easily take the bottom version and slide it over so the dive out marker on the top clip lines up with the dive in marker on the bottom clip. Then of course we need something to mirror that clip's dive back up. So we duplicate the top clip and line its dive in with the bottom one's dive out. Now here you can see the blue marker I set to denote that I'm on the landing shows up at two points within this loop. If I set my in and out points at those two points and watch this video, it is almost a seamless loop. The only problem left is that we now have hard cuts where the top two versions meet during the water. This can easily be smoothed over with a simple cross dissolve transition. The bottom clip also doesn't have a perfectly seamless loop, so we duplicate that, also adding a cross dissolve over there. And finally, in this side dive version, we have a seamless loop. Oh my, giant, humongous, enormous loop. I'd say colossal. We trim off all the extra before and after the loop and nest this whole thing. Then we change our sequence settings so the size is appropriate for the output, probably 1080 by 1080. Then we can use the single nested loop to add our keyframes to follow the diver. However, since this time the clip we're adding keyframes to is two loops long, we're going to actually duplicate our keyframes, copying and pasting them to the end and reversing the order. So we have a rotation that goes with the diver one way and a reverse rotation going with the diver back. Just a little more color correction and bam! There it is, folks. The mirror dive looping video breakdown. Hope you guys dug this tutorial. Thanks for asking for it. Uh, let me know if you want to see some more. And, um, uh, shoot, actually the limbs aren't here. If I could just retime this with time remapping and add a little mask. Yeah, you're going to run into problems when you're working on this. And if you don't know Adobe Premiere or Adobe After Effects very well, it's going to be a little harder. If only there was somebody who taught those programs professionally. Psst, there is. I am a professional Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects trainer. And if you want to learn more about how to learn more about these programs, for me, check out the link in the description below. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, and smash that bell. Thanks. <laughs>